guys, I'm here to talk today about general conure avian anatomy. So, um, I just want to take Rio here real quick. Step up, baby. Thank you. Oh, what a good boy. And this is Rio. You guys know him pretty well by now. Um, he's a green cheek conure. And so, what we're going to talk about is Rio's a good little boy. And um, he's very healthy. You can tell that um, he has had his nails trimmed because the little ends have been um, taken off so they're not sharp and they're not pointy. And <laughs> if you get really close to him, you can tell that he's got um, bright eyes. He doesn't have any film on them, nothing's covering them. Um, his beak is in good shape. Um, it's nice and solid. It doesn't have anything inside of his nostrils. There's nothing blocking, um, blocking those so he can breathe breathe just fine. Um, something to remember is that the beak goes up into the cranium. Um, it actually is part of their skull, so you never want to touch the beak hard. You always want to be very careful when you're around their beak. Um, it's very sensitive, so um, as you can tell, sometimes he'll let me touch it and sometimes he won't. Um, when the two of them, when Pip and Rio kind of argue and when they're preening, uh, sometimes they'll grab a hold of each other's beaks really hard. Sometimes, <laughs> what are you guys doing? Sometimes they will put their little beak points down inside their, each other's nostrils. And, you know, that's, that's just the way birds are. So, um, that is normal behavior. It is totally acceptable. It is fine. Um, as long as they are not um, pulling each other's beaks back and forth and trying to poke holes in them and, you know, be malicious, it's totally fine and it's regular, um, regular avian behavior. So um, another thing that we'd like to talk about is that birds all have um, blood feathers. And basically what these are is, if I can find one, I'll show it to you. Um, it's when the feather is still inside the shaft and there's blood running to it. And that's what helps it grow. Um, you want to really be careful that you don't ever pull on their feathers. Because if there is a blood feather and you accidentally pull it out, the bird could bleed to death and die. So. Um, you want to be very careful. And okay, so on Conyers, like a lot of big parrots, um, as you'll notice, he has this little tiny white feather back here on the back side, which sometimes he'll let me show, sometimes he won't. Um, you probably should not ever touch that because that can promote um, bad behavior in your bird. They might actually think that you'd like to mate with them. So um, you don't want to encourage that. But I will show you just for the purpose of this video. Pip won't let me show you hers, more than likely. But it's right above their tail feathers. It's right there. It's nice and white. It kind of almost looks like um, a white candle wick. So what that is, is it's carotene. And when birds are cleaning, either when they clean each other or when Rio cleans himself or when Pip cleans herself, um, they go back to the back and they nibble on that feather and they get a little bit of the coating. And then they take the carotene with their beak and they apply it to the other feathers on their body. And what that does is the carotene actually helps them repel water. So if they're in the wild and they get stuck in a rainstorm, it can still allow them to fly because the water will repel off rather than soaking it up and making it difficult for them. So as you can tell, he's definitely going back there now that I've drawn attention to it and making sure that he can get some and take it to his other feathers as he preens. So. Um, right now, that, that behavior that he's doing right now, that's called preening. He's actually preening himself. Um, Pip is over here on this shoulder, and she is preening me. So, um, this is something that birds do more than half the day. Um, now, if you notice that they're pulling their feathers out, or their down feathers, um, you will probably want to consult an avian vet. Um, it is normal for them to, on occasion, pull a feather out. Um, it's usually when the feather is loose and it's dead and it's dried up and it's time for a molt. And then they will have new feathers coming back in. Um, that's a stretch, what he's doing just now. Uh, Pip is cleaning, Rio's preening. And um, I'll try to get them into a situation where you can see where they're about to go potty. Um, they usually give me a little wing sign and it tells me that I need to move them. So. Um, if you're going to potty train your bird, it is important to have a general idea of when they are going to go to the bathroom so that you can positively reinforce the good behavior. Um, I don't recommend scolding and I don't recommend, um, you know, flicking them in the beak because that's awful and it's mean and it hurts and it goes all the way into their head. 
Um, so if you're going to be unhappy about their behavior, if they potty on something they're not supposed to, I just recommend replacing them to the nearest branch or to their cage and walking away. Um, birds generally want to be with you, so by doing that and returning them to their cage, um, when they've done something like that, when they potty in, on something that you don't want them to, that will show them that what they have done is not appropriate. So, um, you want to make sure that you reinforce, though, positively the good behavior. So, when they do go potty where you want them to go potty, um, then you've taken care of, um, of their need of knowing that they've done good by you. So, um, and then in the future, you continue to reinforce that with treats and good praise. Um, Rio particularly works best with good praise. Pip works best with treats. So um, when I'm training them to do new things, I have to do it separate for both of them. Sorry, I had an itch. Um, let's see, what else can I talk about, guys? Um, you can clip your bird's feathers. Uh, you only want to clip on the wings, and I recommend going to an avian vet and having an avian vet do this. Uh, Rio is a very good model for me and is letting me show you all sorts of things about him right now. Um, he doesn't always allow me to do this because they are his wings and you know he doesn't have to share them. Um, but typically what you want to do is you want to leave the two end wings, the longest ones right here, extended and allow them to stay at their full length. Um, the home that I got Rio back from, they actually gave him a really bad wing haircut and um, Pip as well. Rio was basically almost completely unflighted. He, he really could just fall and it wasn't a soft landing um, and that's not safe. So I really, really, really recommend taking your bird to an avian vet and having them trim the wings for you because not only can you hurt your bird or injure it when it goes to fall, but you can also accidentally snip one of the blood feathers and they could bleed to death and die. Um, Rio does have a blood feather back here. Yes, Rommel, what would you like? That's my chihuahua. Um, maybe he'll be in a video someday. Um, if I can get Rio to spread his tail out here. Can I show them the new feather back there? Okay, so right up here in the back of Rio's tail, he has a little baby feather growing. Um, I may not be able to do it with Pip on me because she would like to be a part of this now, even though she does not like me to touch her in all these places. So, um, let me see here. And now there is going to be serious traffic out back as well. Okay. Um, sorry about that. Okay, so I'm trying to find this little feather. It is really hard because he's obviously already had his molt and um, his feathers are coming back in very nicely. But if you can tell, there is a little baby feather right here and that is a blood feather because it is still growing. It is not at its full length. And up inside of there is a shaft and it has blood going to the rest of the feather allowing it to grow. So you really want to leave them alone. You know, you don't want to trim um, the wing feathers that look like that because you could make your bird bleed to death. You never trim the tail feathers, you never trim their beaks, you only trim their toenails. And I recommend for the best possible outcome taking your bird to an avian vet and allowing them to uh, clip your bird's wings and clip your toenails if that's something you're going to do. Um, if you are going to work on potty training your bird, potty training a bird that is flighted still is often the best um, the best way to potty train because, yes, that's how you learned, right? Yes, yes, you learned when you were flighted, right? Um, that way you can teach them to go in their cage and that should be the only place that they go. Um, if they're away from their cage and they're on you or they're with you in another part of your house, um, a good thing to do is to keep a stack of newspapers nearby and allow them to go over the newspaper before they go potty. Um, I think Rio is actually ready to go. That's what he's trying to tell me is that he needs to go potty. Rio, go poop. Rio, go poopy. Oh, can you go potty for mom? Hmm? Rio, can you go potty for mom? And we're going to try and do this on command because usually what he does is he just tells me that he needs to go which could be what he's asking for right now. Now that's Pip telling me that she needs to go when she raises her wings. So um, when she goes all out like that, that means that potty is definitely going to happen. So um, it's kind of the warning shot. It's like, 
it's going to happen. And if you don't want to get pooped on, then we need to work on this now. So, um, Pip, can you go potty for me? Can you go potty and show everybody how to go poop? Huh? Can you show everybody how to go poopy? <gasps> can you go for me? Huh? Rio, what are you doing? Can you go potty for me? <gasps> oh, Pip's telling me. She's like, I've got to go potty. Yeah. Okay, go potty for me. <gasps> There's one. Yay! What a good boy. Good boy, Rio. Okay, Rio's going back to where he wants to sit, which is on top of the computer. So, um, he's done. Okay, Pippi, can you go potty? <gasps> can you go potty for me? Can you, Pippi, can you go poopy? Maybe? I think what they're seeing is I have an orange sitting on the counter and they would like to be treated for it. So um, I'm sure that's what we will be doing um, when we get done with this video is they're telling me that they have made enough video today and um, it is time to have a treat. So uh, Pip does seem like she's wanting me to know that when she goes it's going to be enormous. So. Um, <laughs> that could have something to do with their vocalizations right now and the extreme wing flapping that's going on. Um, sometimes, since she's still a baby and this is something that she's just kind of learned how to do, she doesn't understand that raising her wings like that gives me the notion that she needs to go to the bathroom. Sometimes she does it and she toots. And um, funny story, we were actually taking a nap the other day and my husband was home and we're all laying in bed and it's kind of you know moderately shaded and dark in there and all of a sudden she let out a good size gas and my husband thought it was me and i was like no that would be our bird so um i think with being on a better fruit and vegetable diet and having had broccoli that probably is aiding in some of the noises that we've heard so um again she's about eight months old so you know, she's probably still getting used to her own bodily functions, but, uh, yeah, I mean, this is, this is probably not going to happen right now for Pip, but it did happen for Rio, so, um, that's, that's kind of how you, you work on potty training, you watch their actions, and, um, then you praise them when they do a good job, and if they don't, then you just kind of put them back, and you don't, uh, you don't let them know that it affected you, because you don't want to hurt their feelings, or, um, make them feel like, you know, they have to go on your schedule because you don't like to go when people tell you to go potty either. So you have to be patient and remember not to set yourself up for failure because birds will always have accidents. Um, they usually go to the bathroom every 10 to 20 minutes, sometimes more often if they've just eaten or if they've had a watery fruit treat. Um, just different things to remember. So that was just some of the general avian health guidelines and, and different things about their bodies that I thought I should share with you. Um, again, if you have questions, always consult your avian vet. Um, don't go looking on forums and stuff because sometimes they can really freak you out. Um, but yeah, that's just stuff to, to keep in mind and I uh, hope that's been helpful today. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to uh, like, follow, subscribe and you know, keep a good community going. Have a good one.